Fans of Napoleonic history are eating well these days, as Ridley Scott's Napoleon is finally giving the French Emperor a modern makeover on the big screen. But if you want to immerse yourself even more into this mythological character and the surrounding time period, you might want to turn to video games, where it's possible to spend a lot more time in the 18th and 19th centuries. And so in this video, I'll show you the best Napoleon or Napoleonic adjacent video games to play if you're obsessed with blind infantry, taller than average Frenchmen, and sail ships loaded with cannons. And what's more, in honor of this historic Napoleonic occasion, I'm giving away, for free, one code for one of the most defining Napoleonic video game experiences ever, Napoleon Total War. If you want a chance to win this game in the next 7 days, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment, telling me about your favorite Napoleonic era video game and or movie. This giveaway will run for 7 days after upload, so make sure to subscribe, like, and leave your comment as soon as possible. And if you already own Napoleon, well, then why not enter the giveaway anyway, and give the code away to a friend if you win. Our first game out the gate is also therefore the one, the only, the obvious, Napoleon Total War. If you're familiar with Total War, this game should be a no-brainer. But for the uninitiated, let me give you the spiel. Napoleon Total War is a grand strategy game taking place during the Napoleonic Wars, a game and a series which offers up grand campaign maps, where you need to combine strategic thinking with development goals on the campaign map, and make use of that tactical side of your brain in the awesome real-time battles. Napoleon Total War might have released way back in 2010, but there's actually no real way you'd notice if it weren't for the lacking 4K resolution UI scaler. These visuals still look insanely good today, both on that overmap, on the battlefield, and on the high seas. And what makes Napoleon Total War so special is this insane production value that holds up all these years later. This is a Napoleon game through and through, offering not just Napoleon's campaign in Italy, not just Napoleon's campaign in Egypt, but even Napoleon's grand campaign in Europe, offering the largest map of the continent up until that point in the series. Every campaign features historical characters, including Napoleon himself, but if you want to go beyond playing as France, it's even possible to enter the coalition campaign and play as either Britain, Prussia, Austria or Russia and try to take on Napoleon himself. If you are so inclined, you can even duke it out in Iberia in the Peninsular Campaign for a change of pace. The battles here are equally or even more spectacular, as you make use of your line infantry, cavalry, and artillery to defeat your enemy on a grand scale, and it becomes even more awesome when you factor in those naval battles, which arguably have never been done better. In other words, Napoleon Total War is a fantastic game on its own, and even better if you want some serious Napoleonic action. If you want to get even closer to the action than being the commander of armies, our next game lets you do just that. Hold Fast Nations at War is something as unique as a historical, Napoleonic, third or first person massive multiplayer online shooter, but it's so much more than that. Here you get to choose your nation, choose your type of soldier, and then be one out of maximum 150 players on the battlefield. Being a game from 2020, it still feels relatively new and fresh, and if you crank up the visual settings which is very possible, it even looks quite awesome as well. But what's so unique about Holdfast is that sensation of being part of something bigger, of being one man out of dozens and even hundreds, fighting to further that cause. You're just a guy trying to survive, as musket shots fly all around you and cannonballs do the same. Oh, and it's quite hilarious too. Come on, lads. Do not cower in fear. That is a British army. Holy bastards. Get our music, man. Jesus, how hard is it to a fucking officer? <laughs> That's the thing about Holdfast, it really is all about the multiplayer experience, and it's a vital part of shaping that game. 
After all, if you watch the trailers for this game, it's all about proper historical warfare, but most who play this game quickly find out it's about every man for himself, really. It's weirdos making sounds over the in-game chat. That's why you might want to think about joining a role-playing server, where players actually try to line up properly and march in unison towards certain death, rather than the ragtag every man for himself guerrilla warfare you mostly get otherwise. I'm not saying it's not fun. It is fun, and can even be more hilarious when people voice chat and act their part, but it's certainly at its best with a bit more structure. Number 3 on our list is none other than Assassin's Creed Unity, an Assassin's Cult classic taking place mostly in Paris during the French Revolution. Napoleon does feature in this game, but is not really a main character, so the draw here is the time period and the French setting. Assassin's Creed Unity was the first next-gen Assassin's Creed on the PS4 and Xbox One systems when it came out back in 2014, and if you choose to play it on PC today, with all the updates and fixes, it still looks and feels amazing. Unity honestly remains perhaps the best looking Assassin's Creed game in many ways even 9 years later, which means that jumping back in basically feels like playing a modern game. What's cool about Unity is that it's one of the only games, if not the only, that features a true-to-life simulation of revolutionary Paris and this time period, and allows us to meet some of the important figures of this era. Of course, as is Assassin's Creed tradition, visiting these sites and taking Paris in is arguably the main event here, while the parkour system might just be the best the series ever made. In other words, if you are a Napoleonic era fanatic and want to dive into an action-adventure game, Assassin's Creed Unity, especially on PC, is no bad choice at all. Now, before we move on to some interesting games, a few titles I've personally not played, but that you may consider if you're brave in one way or another, are Wars of Napoleon from Agiod, a deep and seemingly complex strategy game that's all about warfare and managing your armies, units, and tactics, but probably a game that requires a lot of dedication to learn, Cossacks 2 Napoleonic Wars or Battle for Europe, which seems to offer some kind of Age of Empires to meets Total War style form of gameplay, and, drumroll please, Paradox's very own 2013 title if you can believe it, March of the Eagles. This game came out just before my time with Paradox, but definitely looks like some sort of unholy mix between CK2, Victoria 2, and EU4. But apparently, it's supposed to have been quite fun for its time, just not as grand nor as complex as its peers. And now, I want to mention some other games that don't necessarily deal with Napoleon, but definitely touches on similar time periods or subject matter. And from March of the Eagles, let's go straight to Victoria 3. Victoria 3 is the latest grand strategy game from Paradox, and it takes place, not surprisingly, during the Victorian era. But as it relates to Napoleon, well, it does begin in 1836, just roughly two decades after the Napoleonic Wars, meaning the world and the style of combat and vibe feels pretty much the same in these beginning phases. Here you wage wars, manage your economy and supply chains, change your country's laws, and deal with diplomacy on a global scale. You can even bring back the French Empire if you got what it takes, led by Napoleon himself, albeit, um, Napoleon III. But, and this is quite awesome, if you do want to play as the actual Napoleon, all you have to do is download the Napoleonic Wars map mod from the Steam Workshop, and as Napoleon would say, voila. Now you have the actual, historical Napoleonic world intact, and represented like never before, at least in geopolitical terms. France is powerful here, with a number of puppets and client states littered around Europe, and even in America, where France still controls Louisiana. This map is gorgeous, and I love how the modder have represented this world in such detail, which you can see down to the various confederation of the Rhine states, to all of these small Kurdish states on the fringes of the Ottoman Empire. This mod is not fully finished, and I find that the most pressing matter is perhaps technology, which, and this goes for the most non-political or diplomatic aspects, still retain vanilla settings. But if you want to play as Napoleon, and actually make him a commander, then this mod for Victoria 3 is one of the most exciting options out there. Now for an extremely exciting title. Ultimate General American Revolution might not take place in Europe nor exactly during the Napoleonic Wars, but it does feature Napoleonic-like warfare, and only 20 odd years prior to Napoleon's rise to power. Much like Total War games, this just released early access title features a campaign map where you must manage your armies, cities, and state apparatus, and a dedicated battlefield where you take tactical and real-time control of your regiments. It's an awesome concept, and since we have banner carriers, musket firing regiments, cannons, awesome naval combat, and yes, a lot of gunfire smoke, it definitely does quench some of that Napoleonic era thirst, and I really do recommend checking it out. 
If you're more of the city builder type, then why not check out Anno 1800? Taking place in the 19th century in an industrializing and modernizing setting, Anno 1800 is like the up and close version of Victoria 3. While not fully Napoleonic as such, it does feel like a great Napoleonic era companion game since so much from that time period or onward, as in the case of Victoria, can be found right here. And finally, Empire Total War. Empire Total War, much like Napoleon Total War, offers those great Total War campaigns, field battles and naval battles, but on a much larger global scale. It does begin in 1700 and pretty much ends towards the end of the 18th century however, so Napoleon is sadly nowhere to be seen, but you can spark the French Revolution early and take charge of revolutionary France yourself, as well as any of the other playable factions present. In essence, Empire is a much grander but less historical counterpart to Napoleon, but one that still very much scratches that Napoleonic itch, especially with mods. And those were the best Napoleonic and Napoleonic-like games out there, at least as far as I'm concerned. Again, if you want a chance to win a code for Napoleon Total War for yourself or a friend, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment telling me about your favorite Napoleonic video game and or movie within the next 7 days. If you feel like I've missed any important titles, or if you agree that these games are awesome, make sure to let me know as well. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!